Back on Inside Tennessee, talking about redistricting in Knox County, something we do every 10 years. That is by law and is based on the latest census figures. Don, why don't you lead us off with some more questions? Sure. John, did a, you did a nice job of setting up why this is important on what ordinarily might seem to be a very dry subject. But, um, Daisha, I'll start with you. Your district um, seems to have uh, both the most and, and at least the most emotional impact in terms of some of the changes. We have about 470,000 residents in Knox County. And as, as John pointed out, about 53,000 per district. If you know, Daisha or Kyle, how many people are actually affected by a move to another county commissioner or school board member out of the 470,000 residents? Daisha, I'll start with you. I'd have to. If you know, or think, Kyle. It might be more of a Kyle. I want to say it was like 47,000 people. Okay, Something so like about that. 10%. Yeah, somewhere around the 40, 50, about 10%, correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, are, are, is there any one district uh, that is more sort of disproportionately affected than another in terms of numbers, percentage uh, of population moving from one district to another? In other words, Daisha, are, are you gaining or losing a net 5 or 10 percent, or is there a district that, that is higher than that? Commit My district is gaining. District. Yeah. Commissioner Hill's Go district ahead. has the most movement. Sorry. The Commissioner Hills District has the most movement out of all the districts because it was the most overpopulated. And, and I just and, want to interrupt, uh, Don, Don, let me show you this. This is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, Commissioner right. Ward referencing out west, we've seen the most amount of growth. So this is District 6 with Terry Hill, and you're saying that's where we're seeing the most change. Correct. The most amount of people change uh, in there because we have to reduce the population by 10,000, I believe, roughly. Right. So that has the most <laughs> movement out of all the districts. And, and then Commissioner Schoonmaker's the, district in Farragut would be second. Right, go ahead, Kyle. Right yeah, and that, that's Sorry. indicative Commissioner, of growth in Hardin yeah. Valley. Correct, yes, sir. Um, and then I same thing Commissioner the most Go ahead. Correct. Right, and so you have the most gain, Daisha, is that correct? You're gaining maybe the highest percentage mm -hmm. of constituents within your district? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask Daisha this question. I, I was reading up on this to be somewhat educated about this. Um, looks like the black population in the community now is about 40,300, and that has declined in the last decade. In 2010, the population mm -hmm. of this county was 8.8%, and now is 84 But the population of people that identify as two or more races has increased by 6.5%, and the Hispanic Latino population has increased by 6%. What, can you talk about a little bit why you think that's happened? Why has the black community, why have the numbers decreased some since 2010, and the others are increasing? Uh, Daisha. Uh, well, a lot of it has to do with a lot of people moving. Um, the other areas for opportunity. That's always been an elephant in the room of um, blacks not having the opportunity to climb up the ladder in, in, in our community. And that's why you see a, a, a decrease in, in, in those numbers. Um, we, we lose that talent all the time. Uh, a lot of us like to talk about how not, the not so cost decline has definitely impacted the black community and black culture. and. You know, when Knox College was thriving, it was definitely a, a huge employer of that community, uh, the middle class community. But since that declined, our our, um, our numbers have declined. Well, that, that makes some sense. Um, ha is there a district in which the Latino, uh, Hispanic population and the people that identify as two or more races, are they concentrated in any of these districts? Uh, Kyle, have you all been able to identify that uh, in your in your research on this? I don't think we looked for specific pockets. We did get um, we did get minority numbers for every district, and the minority numbers have increased. I believe in the third and the fourth, the most after um, the first and the second. So the minority population is moving out from the center of the city, basically 
into the suburbs is what we're seeing as a trend. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's interesting. Uh, Commissioner um, Ward, I wanted to ask you, you, you dropped this map again a couple of weeks ago at the meeting and it passed. Uh, there is a, uh, an ability for the public to comment on things they like and don't like on the KnoxDistricts.org website. And I know there are a few comments on there. What has been the reaction that you're hearing from the general public uh, about what, what's on the table at the moment? Sure. I think with everybody, nobody wants to be moved. You know, it, everybody's for development until they're building, you know, behind their house kind of thing. Um, I think in general, we I haven't heard anything too, too much pushback like we were hearing originally from the Sequoia Hill people and from the people in the first that, you know, that Sequoia didn't want to move to the first. The first didn't want Sequoia moving in. So we haven't had any uproars like that. Um, but I think every single precinct that's going to move there's going to be some people that are unhappy i think there's going to be some people that are happy some people are joining you know school districts with different school represents uh school representation which some of them are very happy about and you know some people are disappointed about so i don't think there's any scenario where we can make everybody happy but the first thing we need to do is bring a legal map to the table meaning that the numbers have to all add up correctly and then go from there and just for clarity for our viewers, Commissioner Ward, and then I'd like to get to you, Commissioner Lundy, on that same question, but uh, just because uh, where you vote, the, the person who represents you change doesn't mean that you have to move schools. So you may see a different Correct. school board representative, but you can stay mm -hmm. at the, the same school. I think that's just important to emphasize, Correct. correct? Yes, uh, the school board actually sets the school zone. I will I'll, I'll say we, it doesn't change the school zone. It just changes the representative for that particular area. And Commissioner Lund to Commissioner Ward stands for you. Uh, what about uh, impact and what have you heard from your constituents so far about this particular map? Well, I, I, along the lines of what Commissioner Ward said, people were very upset when 24Q, which was the Pour Your Heels, uh, on the table for that to be set in District 1. We received a lot of pushback. With this map, it's not as much. There are, of course, people upset because, you know, we are used to uh, being in a certain district and having, you know, that certain representation, that cer certain culture of the district. So that's the only thing, but it's not as much uh, as it was when the discussion was on the table with Sequoia Hills. We've got to take another quick break, but Susan, I'll let you lead us off in the third with our commissioners. More discussion about redistricting. Again, this is a plan in evolution. It could change. We're back with more right after this.